Hi everyone, this is my story of resilience. My English name, Angela, means the messenger of God derived from the Greek word Angelo. And my Korean name is my middle name, Mira, which means beauty. Um, I think it also means to look in Spanish, uh, the verb mirar. Uh, my mom gave me my name Angela because to her it sounded a lot like angel, so she really liked that. Um, and at the time, it was very popular for Korean families to put uh, their Korean name in the middle and to give them uh, an American English name so, so they can kind of blend in. This is my family tree. My mom's side is on the right and my dad's side is on the left. My mom's side, my grandmother was actually born and raised in Japan. She didn't know. And um, during the, when doing the bombings, uh, she, they ran away back to Korea. And I'll be sharing a little bit more in detail about my grandmother's story in the next recording. And my dad's side, they're actually from North Korea. And apparently my grandfather was a great swimmer and he swam his whole family over the river on his back. And my grandfather also taught my, my dad how to swim. So my dad's a very strong swimmer. My mom and my grandmother and my, our family story is actually very, very interesting, very dark, very intense and um, it really did make me question what happened along the way and I think this also is the same story for a lot of Korean American families that I know where a lot of the parents have immigrated to America thinking and having high hopes but something happens along the way where they lose sight and um, just a lot of trauma builds up. So this was a question that I really asked myself and my parents and I tried in trying to find an understanding of why and what my mom had gone through and what she had put me through. Uh, the differences and similarities between my parents and I um, it's very interesting because during that time when a lot of Koreans would immigrate to America, they left Korea at a time where it, there's a lot of very um, conservative mindset and it was very chauvinistic and a very conservative mindset. And so a lot of the time when they left Korea and they came to America, they thought that being Korean meant to hold on to these traditional conservative beliefs. And so they become stuck in that time. And they thought that's what it meant to be Korean in America. Whereas all of my aunts and uncles that stayed behind and stayed in Korea, and when we go back to visit them, they actually have a very, very open mindset and a very different understanding of what it means to be Korean. So it's very interesting. Uh, my mom also went through a really hard time. Um, she had no choice uh, but to work. And she really wanted to work. And she, you know, she had to work at a very young age because she lost her father. But I think it really did conflict with her Korean beliefs that a wife should stay home. But she became a working mom. And I think that really kind of took a toll um, and she had a lot of confusion. So here is our Oh yeah, the dessert tradition. dance. Give it a thumbs up too, Laura. What's her thumbs up? After your last bite? Thumbs up? So that's my daughter, Alora, my firstborn. <laughs> and, um, uh, it's our family it's kind of tradition. tradition. <laughs> Something oh my gosh! Really delicious. We kind of do a dance, and I guess it kind oh, of yeah, started with me. Dance. But it we've thumbs been up too, hearing about that up? tradition. Um, After your last bite, our three kids. Also, in the top, uh, top three pictures on your right. Uh, <laughs> 
in Korea that uh, back in the day, in Korea, when your child reached the age of oh one, it was very rare because a lot of children were dying. Oh yeah, the dessert dance. Give it a thumbs up too, Laura. So What's your thumbs up? Child turned one, After your last bite? have a huge party, a huge feast. Thumbs up. Everyone. And we call it the Dol Jan. Dol Chi means uh, first birthday. I think the rest so of the right corner, you see the lion. Oh my gosh. And where they stuck up. Kind of a more of a Buddhist or Oh yeah, the dessert Buddhist dance. Where they stuck up. Give it a thumbs up too, Laura. What's your thumbs up? There you have After your last bite. Friend, Laura, at her first birthday. And also. Um, you, they do something called a door jabi, which means you lay out these different objects, which means diff which have the different names, and you make bets on oh the big gosh. And uh, for my first one, my daughter oh, yeah, the grabbed dance. a bow and arrow. Give it a thumbs up too, Laura. Which What's thumbs up? I believe is the first time seeing After your last bite. it. Um, but apparently, he means a fighter. Thumbs up. And. Um, and every year for the new year, uh, we dress our kids up in Korean traditional clothes called hanbo. Oh you my god. Other two kids on the left. And on the bottom right, oh is, yeah, the dessert um, dance. Give it a thumbs up too, Laura. Right? What's your thumbs up? Name, Ho, ah, Jin. After your last bite. And Jin, and the last part of her name, is um, a tradition that's passed on from my husband's side, the dad's side of the family. So we have to follow that. And so all of my children oh my have gosh. Jin in the name. And also because oh, yeah, the our dance. Korean language was a thumbs right up too, Laura. What's your thumbs up? Chinese and Japanese. After your last we also bite. write in Chinese uh, Thumbs up. And in the middle is my cousin's husband. <laughs> so this is our tradition of where we always, every single year for Christmas, oh we, my get gosh. Together. we get together many times. But for Christmas, we have just our cousin's party. Oh yeah, the dessert dance. Where it is a thumbs it's up our too, kind of way of looking at the old traditions and having our own party. And we have this um, white elephant party. And among the gifts, <laughs> someone always, someone always sneaks in the fugglers. Uh, and uh, oh my god, I got that gift one one year when I first got introduced to her. Oh yeah, the I dessert the dance. Give it a thumbs up so too, Laura. What's your thumbs up? Um, and then because of my reaction, it just kind of became a thing. So every year, these thumbs fugglers up. or these like fuggler dolls come back into our white elephant <laughs> gift exchange. Um, and the story of my family in America and how my family contributed to America and um, again our story is very dark and very long but I really truly believe that um, even though we lost everything that it's our endurance and how we overcame our traumas and just life in general happening uh, I believe that's a great testimony, but also I hope that it encourages others that they too can overcome things. And above is a picture of footsteps, um, and I took that picture in Korea. Being bicultural, um, I think one of the greatest things is that you are able to have a little bit of taste and a little bit of understanding of what uh, of the Korean culture and the American culture but the downside is that I feel that um, because I am not full Korean and because I am not full American I I do I am kind of caught in the middle where I feel like I'm not fully accepted by Koreans but I'm also not fully accepted by Americans who've been in America for generations and generations. We have a very different mindset. And because my parents are immigrants, it's a, it's a very different background and upbringing. So I feel like I can't fully connect to both sides. However, on the bright side is I'm able to have a taste um, of culture. And I'm very lucky for that. <laughs> This strings interest in passion. Yeah, right. 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 Y
This is my life story, our family story. Um, there's pictures of my mom, my dad, and my parents on the left. And thank you for listening. <laughs>